Okay, so welcome also on my behalf. Uh, we have a pretty interesting uh, panel discussion on a great uh, subject. Uh, I have a privilege to be here and host this panel uh, uh, with these three uh, young doctors who are actually the uh, decision makers in, in their own field. Uh, Timo as, uh, as a representative of, of public sector and the pro uh, public healthcare services. Essi uh, representing the, the private healthcare services and uh, Jani as an uh, as, uh, insurance company, private insurance company. Uh, uh, we have basically two topics that we want to, to go into. Uh, the first is uh, basically the new way or the ideal way of, of how to arrange the, the uh, primary healthcare services and how to fund them. Uh, and the second one is how to move the focus on, on more on the preventive side and preventive services and then how the uh, dynamics on the, the funding and, and arranging the services actually uh, 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 are supporting this kind of, of movement. So we are uh, basically living the post-social uh, and health care reform era right now and obviously the, the last one didn't happen. Um, now the, the Payet Hammer region is actually uh, uh, planning to, to make a joint venture with the private healthcare service provider. Uh, and it has raised lots of conversation basically on, on the pros and the cons. Obviously one of the pros is that, uh, that they feel that uh, the private side is actually making the pro uh, more progress on the digital service side. Um, but still there is some concerns about how, how we're treating the, uh, the uh, staff, employees, and, and, and how the whole model actually will work. Uh, and also, uh, going back a little bit to the morning's uh, presentation by, by Sam Shah, uh, he said that about 90% of the population is uh, actually connected to the internet and the mobile, mobile devices. So basically, we have the channels. Uh, and also he mentioned the, the four barriers, uh, what we need to take uh, under consideration when we are basically uh, uh, designing the services, the access, confidence, skills, and motivation. So basically keeping these in mind, uh, first I want to ask Jani that uh, in this uh, scenario, what is the role of uh, private insurance companies? You mean in the scenario of, of uh, Lahti making the yeah, basically this kind of new new way of. Well, that's that's a good question. Um, as w as you might know or we know, we do own these private companies like Mehilainen or, or or have invested in you guys. So we we basically we act as a uh, payer in the system, a private payer. Um, but in that model, I, I I do not have the answer for that one. Um, I it's very it's going to be very interesting to see where we're going where the public sector is going, but I, I do not have the answer for, for how are we going to you know, position ourselves in, in, in that kind of a model. Sorry. Okay, uh, very political <laughs> answer. <clears throat> so, Timo, uh, what do you think? Uh, do you think that city of Helsinki will, will need some help from, from these different kind of uh, uh, stakeholders, let's say insurance companies and private uh, providers to, to meet the expectations of, of the citizens of Helsinki in the future? Uh, excellent question as well. Uh, uh, just to begin with, uh, I want to say that I'm not pro or con to privatization in a way. I, I think our customers and patients deserve the best. And uh, what's the way of delivering it is, is, is whether it's mm. private or public, it's the same for me in a way. I just need the best results. Uh, we are creating these social impact bonds, which could be in a way as well moderated by insurance companies. It's a way of delivering uh, results in a longer term, as are in Lahti perhaps. And uh, it takes care, uh, it kind of puts the uh, incentive on the uh, prevention and longer term results. Mm. Of course, the uh, results and the uh, uh, money come later on 
but in a way we can uh, have measures that are halfway, uh, like BMI or stuff like that, that uh, shows indicate, uh, indication of uh, getting results on the later time. But I think uh, we're going to be uh, health insurance companies is something we can uh, really learn from. Uh, there's different kind of methods we could, as a public sector, we could perhaps make some tax uh, differences for people who take care of their uh, health better and this kind of stuff. Mm. Yeah. Just a brief comment on that. I, I do agree as well that we, it doesn't matter whether the services are provided by private sector or the public sector or whatever. Uh, I, I'd say that the primary care is, uh, maybe it's too hard to say that it's in a crisis, but we need to improve the access to care uh, significantly and we do need these new models on prevention and so forth. And I do think that we need to have or take more risk, uh, financial risk, not medical risk, but financial risks. And in those situations, I think the new you know, financial instruments that an insurance company might have uh, might be a good option. Uh, so those are very interesting <coughs> to see. Okay, yes, so I think <coughs> if I can also comment. Yeah. Um, I think the one phrase that you brought up, patient-centeredness, is the one thing we really need to focus on and uh, kind of shift our perspective from who pays and, and these different organizations to what the patients, what are the needs of the patient. And um, kind of, I love the, this whole question of the Bayatame area um, um, scenario is very interesting because it, it allows us to think about this uh, whole as a, from a completely new way. Mm. In the end, whether the funder is uh, uh, the government through tax or the insurance company or the private sector, in the end, the patient always pays mm. in one way or another. The money just moves in the background mm. in a different way. And I think it, every, everyone wants the service. And um, mm. I, I think we have to kind of detach ourselves from the political uh, philosophies and so forth and focus on the services that we provide. Uh, from a patient-centered perspective. Yeah. <clears throat> so if you think about how, how could we make the change uh, uh, maybe, maybe faster than, than slower, uh, let's say that there would be a, s a scenario where uh, actually insurance companies will come up with a, um, a, a funding model or insurance which is really low cost basically covering the, the digital kind of like the first point of contact layer uh, uh, and kind of support already the, the system. So Essie, uh, what do you think would this kind of, uh, kind of like fast track uh, service add on to the, the kind of like the basic, basic service uh, uh, people are getting right now? Is this something that could be uh, good or what about uh, maybe quality or do you have some concerns or or how do you see it? What uh, I didn't completely catch your question. Did you mean about this, the new kind of low threshold insurance product? Yeah. To mm. guide yep. people Potential. to um, mm. digital services. Yeah, basically kind of like add on to to involve the, the citizens maybe just uh, just a small uh, uh, fee and and get the kind of the digital uh, elements to the, to the first point of contact. Well, yes, I'm obviously a big advocate for uh, low threshold digital services and I've seen the benefits firsthand and we see it in our data. And um, I think today we're going to talk more about prevention, uh, but the, it's a fine line between early intervention and prevention. <laughs> and I think um, by lowering the threshold uh, to the first line of care, it's always a good idea. Mm. It's always a good idea when, when, it's, when the first line of care is, is cost effective. Mm. That's when it's a good idea. So, so I think um, products like the one you discussed, it's, it's providing something extra. And I think in the long run, it will cut costs and um, prevent unnecessary costly visits. We can replace some of those with uh, very inexpensive um, digital services and also uh, help people with their issues before they become big issues. Mm. Mm. But it's not only the, the possible or the possibilities in, within uh, insurance policies. I think we also need new kind of you know, financial models to just pay for outcomes you know, outside the insurance as well. 
Um, at least personally, I'd like to see a world where we could, uh, you know, us or someone else could pay, or maybe the government as well, could pay for outcomes. Uh, and, it, and it shouldn't be an, like an, it's not necessarily an insurance policy. It's just, uh, just a new model of paying, a new model of, you know, delivering services. Um, but I don't know whether we're going to see it or not. Um, my only reservation about, for example, insuring a particular healthcare service, mm. like just digital services, mm. my only reservation about that is that um, the care that patients receive is mm. always kind of on a continuum. It's always dependent on a lot of other players as well, and not just the digital service provider, not just the primary healthcare, not just the prevention. And I'm afraid that I, I'm, I'm afraid that um, products like that might end up giving kind of false incentives and guide the way that we treat people. Um, and again, I think we always have to focus on the patient-centeredness and provide people with the care that they need and not have it be too influenced yeah, by who value. pays. Yeah. Timo. Yep, uh, <clears throat> uh, we uh, started a digital health center concept this year. In our organization, it's a separate unit. Uh, with a focus to deliver in a uh, near future the whole spectrum of digital services from uh, from a video appointments to uh, different kind of apps that we're actually building with Janis Kura in a way and uh, uh, we want to take care of all different sorts of things in, in prevention as well and uh, one one of these digital tools is uh, this kind of a health benefit analysis which we have already the whole population, all the citizens of Helsinki have all their data that we are, have in our public sector patient um, uh, health record system, uh, the health record system of Helsinki, the Pegasus system. Uh, we have uh, forced the da data to go through decision support system and we know uh, how many indicators, for example, different sorts of indicators for uh, health, uh, risks we have in the population. It's, of course, it's only our data, but uh, as well, we get to know how many uh, evidence-based decision uh, support kind of indications for uh, that we're not delivering the best care that we could. We can see how many patients we are lacking. That's kind of, and this could be a model as well from the insurance companies uh, that we pay for those who deliver the best care uh, according to decision support uh, mechanisms in a way because we know there is evidence-based uh, indication that, for example, delivering better BMI results, getting the weight down, we will get long-term results. Mm. And uh, that could be an incentive in a way, mm. and we are actually planning on putting that as an incentive to our doctors and physicians. What do you think, Timo, how easy it is for the public sector to take this long-term risk? You know, you're trying to, maybe you, you're going to fund a, an intervention towards BMI this year, but the profits you're going to have them, you know, later on, within 10 years or something. How are you going to, you know, get the thumbs up for this, this kind of a model? Because you have to pay it this year, but you're going to get the money back later on. Is it hard in the public sector? public sector for yeah. uh, using a private companies to do this. No, 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 no to, to have these long-term incentives that you have to pay maybe higher prices this year to do, to, to pay for the intervention uh, it's towards a BMI based. or, you know, hypertension or whatever. If you mean like, do we get the public sector funding for doing this kind of delivering care that mm. will uh, co kind of uh, enable us to get savings from a special yeah, health care, for example, on. I would say it's impossible. And uh, for that reason, we would perhaps need some kind of uh, uh, joint ventures with, uh, like when it comes to, I don't know how many of you know this kind of uh, uh, blood sugar measurement device, for example, uh, uh, Libre system, uh, where you can get blood measurements of blood sugar levels to your mobile phone, and you can get a constant reading of how your blood sugar levels are going on. There's a di direct uh, impact on how, how well your diabetes, for example, mm. is being care, taken care of. But it's really, really expensive to start that uh, process. But we know in t that in, in a, only in a few years we're going to be 
uh, saving from dialysis, uh, from really like special healthcare costs that are really, mm. really expensive. But to get that money now is basically impossible. So, uh, for example, the companies that deliver these, we could actually pay, uh, create some kind of a social impact bond on mm. these and uh, promise them that we will pay them in 20 years or 10 years or five years yeah. when we are actually saving them. So we would uh, save on the first uh, funding process, first, uh, like, uh, mm. to, we wouldn't have to pay in advance to, to get the budget for that. Yeah, so this is like an investment in health, yeah. in a way. Mm. Exactly, yeah. And those are the models that we need. We need these new models to, you know, finance these, these interventions. Yeah. And those are something that we might be able to do. Mm. And I think the private sector also has the, the models. Let's say the, the occupational healthcare, where, where this kind of uh, investment uh, idea has been uh, uh, more or basically mm. a long time. But I still want to go back a little bit about the. Let's say now we are focusing on the, the customer side, basically on the private sector and the insurance companies, of course, because we, we have to compete. Um, do we? <clears throat> <clears throat> yes, we do. Okay. <laughs> uh, then, let's say the access, uh, basically educating the, the customers and so on, that's really important. Uh, but still, uh, the technology and the, the customer needs and so on doesn't uh, have any effect if, if our, basically the, the staff, the medical staff, doctors, nurses, all the other experts uh, on these, these fields uh, basically buys the idea. So uh, this is actually pretty interesting. I want to ask Timo that, that. How do you see that these new models that we are now talking about, uh, what is the actual, the, the realism uh, in your staff in the city of Helsinki that how, how can they uh, basically get them by the idea and, and start using these kind of services and, and so on? I think the motivation is there. Uh, we. Uh We've been educated that the primary prevention is one of the key things to, uh, and, and uh, for example, our nurses, they are really taught of how to deliver primary care and primary, primary prevention, first of all. But uh, the time is the, uh, the problem. We're lack, lacking funding and resources, and thus we kind of end up delivering care only to the uh, like extinction forest fires instead of preventing them and uh, the focus should be turning to the other like the preventive side but it, at the moment it's kind of impossible although the uh, staff wants to do that mm. so this is basically a kind of similar investment you have to make it first to gain the the, uh, the outcomes better outcomes mm. Uh, the, when the uh, outcome comes in a few, we few weeks or a few months, you I can see. kind of motivate them to do it. But if it comes in a year or two, nobody kind of... That's an extra stress to start doing it when you have other th tasks to do. So uh, we're trying to do little by little. And digitalization is in a way easier to do, do that because uh, when you create one solution, you can multiply it many times. So you can actually, it's just a small task force can start something and then you can deliver it in a larger scale. For example, like me, me logger, we're taking that just today. I decided that we're gonna buy a huge bunch of licenses for that. And uh, so, yeah. And I think also looking at our uh, experience from Lansipohja area where we, we are the service provider uh, on public services, Basically, you can have that jump start on, on, on kind of like starting the, the uh, change in the, in the staff. Basically, that you can use uh, other service providers. Let's say also insurance companies have really good uh, uh, companies and, and co-operators to kind of uh, provide this kind of mm. thing. So do you actually think that, uh, uh, that in a way that I know that you are not kind of pro of these kind of uh, separate services that is not that are not linked to the the main kind of continuum of the of the care but do you think this could uh, still be a kind of risk that we we should take order to to 
basically uh, uh, drive faster the change in, in public services. Well, yes, maybe, but then we need to just ensure that we have um, like an open line of communication and that we can design our processes so that they meet at the right places and... and um, what and if again. there is no time and resources? <laughs> if there is no time and resources, it's a, it's a difficult equation. I mean, that's, that's for sure. Um, another thing maybe... Um, that from, from what you just said, um, the w one problem is also that the patients themselves are not that interested in, in the prevention side of things. They, um, they don't have the motivation. And we don't have, you don't have a queue of people at your healthcare center saying that, oh, I want to prevent um, my weight from going up before, it, b before I'm already very obese. Uh, they're not worried about their uh, blood pressure or, or mm. things like that until it's already quite late and maybe um, uh, Also our, our um, Experience from Lansi Pohya and, and the digital clinic is that sometimes when the patient has a need and They have this low threshold of contact like the digital clinic It's very important for the doctor or other specialist who um, who see who takes that patient on to recognize the risks or for us to build in the kind of system um, where we recognize the risks in in the low threshold of contact places where when the patient has the need that we could direct them to the right services uh, when they contact us and recognize the needs that they have yeah and this is uh. <coughs> Yep. Can I be disagree on you? <laughs> the uh, the motivation sure. is there when you have kind of a, a visible goals like obesity. Mm. Uh, I don't remember if it's totally like this, but I, I think I've read that 50% of the of women are more or less on diets every year. So uh, just to help them do that, although some of them having a diet are not the the ones that need it. Mm. But anyways, we have we are. There is a public demand for, for example, uh, uh, weight losing groups, and we are delivering delivering them. Uh, the fact is that uh, health uh, professionals are not the ones that need to be involved in a way. In all the cases, they're going to be a nutritionalists, um, uh, sports people, or uh, sports direct like um, personal trainers that we have. And uh, just yesterday, we started a. Uh, program where sports uh, professionals are going to start working for us mm -hmm. to to deliver the uh, the things that perhaps our resources don't can't afford to do. Mm -hmm. yeah, and I, I think the the uh, problem is not that that we don't have those services and so on. We have the the people and we have the services, but I think the kind of the breach. Uh, how they can access the services and exactly. how can we find them and motivate them to start and uh, not only start but actually go through the, the whatever kind of plan or, or intervention it is and so on. So, mm. Janne, do you have any ideas how, how this kind of like this, this bridge could be built yeah. and the access and, and so on? Yeah, just to further comment on the Timo's points, um, as you said, it has to be easy, it has to be accessible. Uh, it has to be at home, so it has to happen at home. It, it, these, these things don't happen at the appointment within the hospital walls. So we need these solutions. That this is where the, the potential of digital health actually kicks in, because um, we can you know, deliver these services on a population level, which hasn't been there. Uh, we haven't had this option before. So, so I think there's a huge potential within this area. I don't think that the, the, you know, the highest potential of digital health is actually within the acute care. I do think that it's more in the chronic care, um, um, you know, how do, how do we treat, you know, these chronic conditions like diabetes or, or only the risk factors. Uh, so, uh, for example, like, you know, smoking cessation or, or, or obesity or whatever. Um, so I'd like to see a lot more of that. I'd like to be able to fund those things. I'd like to see a lot more collaboration, with, uh, you know, between private and, and the public sector. I think we don't need to compete. I think we just need to find the best models. And nowadays, also, what I'd like to say is uh, um, that the technology is already there. You guys have great technology. There's a lot of you know, tech, tech companies here as well. 
and through APIs, we should be able to implement these services a lot more than we do nowadays. Uh, for example, our and yours collaboration works very well. Um, we have the insurance systems, you have the medical systems, and through APIs, they discuss very beautifully and they work. So I'd like to see this a lot more within the um, public sector as well. So through APIs, a lot of digital interventions. How do you think we'll see that uh, this kind of uh, development and then APIs and so on uh, works in public sector? Because what I understand is that you are pretty far from the, the decision making on, on these digital uh, services and, and platforms and, and so on. So how do you think, do you have a good kind of like a way of, of uh, uh, making the decisions or, or kind of getting those projects on to make this happen? Uh, one of the things that we that is showing actually that we are doing doing this already is the digital health center, for example, and our joint venture with Kura, and uh, we want to start doing that. We are a, a little bit behind, but we are taking the steps to uh, go forward. Chatbots, chats are opening. We are studying uh, video appointments. Uh, we're doing. Uh, we're using robotics in our uh, nursery homes, uh, etc. So we are taking the steps. Uh, just remember of connecting the dots. I don't know how many Finns are there here, but probably all some of you know that. But not all that we can. You can borrow Nordic walking sticks from uh, libraries and frisbee golf equipment, petang uh, stuff like that. So. I didn't know that until I went to see kind of what's that bag over there. Yeah. And, uh, and, and there's a lot of things that we could do joint even in, within mm. city of Helsinki that we just no, don't know and we cannot, uh, like, does the patient have, can he buy Nordic walking sticks yeah. because they are like 50 euros or something if you want to buy new ones. But, but you can borrow them from the uh, library. So. Yes, and I think that's a very good point that when we talk about prevention, we need to remember that true prevention it's it's something that's in the whole society. It's not just mm. like um, it's not just healthcare. Mm. Um, exactly. It starts Wellness. from the entire society. Whereas healthcare, what we need to focus on is early intervention. I think that's uh, we always talk about prevention, but I think what we're actually talking about is early intervention. Mm. And I think the the. <coughs> Kind of like what you said that we have the possibilities and we have the environment and and we are in investing on those and, and uh, was actually pretty interesting to hear these things that I'm, I live in Helsinki and I had no idea that what kind of investment <laughs> city of Helsinki is making on this preventive uh, services also services but also premises and and what I can use as, as a citizen of Helsinki and so on. Uh, but still, I think this proves the point that there is silos, the occupational health care, which is if, if the, the contract doesn't cover something, which has said that, okay, no, can do that, you can, mm. you have to, to go somewhere. We don't know that, okay, in Helsinki, you can go and borrow the, the Nordic walking sticks and, and so on. So that's something that we need to do and maybe Absolutely. the APIs and, and mm. so on uh, mm. will, will help basically to give the information to the, to the citizens of Helsinki and also the other, other uh, cities and, and so on. Mm. Um, I think one last thing is that we all, always talk about healthcare and, and health insurances and, and so on. So uh, basically uh, we fund the, the treatments for illnesses. That's the, the majority, I think, of the, of the uh, funding need. Uh, but what is the future? Why, why don't we insure uh, preventing services, let's say some diets and so on, and, and, and that kind of things. I'd like to see um, uh, maybe not new players, but new models on the field. Like uh, I mean, some, some of you might have heard or read about the, there's a few great companies in, in the States, uh, actually Omada Health, uh, Virta Health actually by some ingredients, and that are focusing only on one disease group, like, like diabetes or like, like the risk factors for whatever cardiovascular disease, and they're delivering the service throughout this digital channel. This is something that I would definitely like to see here, um, and we're ready to fund those models whenever they are available, so, so that's absolutely uh, one, one, one thing that I'd like to see. 
You guys all satisfied? <laughs> <laughs> no. I think there's a I think there's a great uh, you know requirement or ask for a major revision on the primary care system. Uh, I don't have the answers. I don't think none of us do. But there's there's we just have to try new things, and we need, we need these new financial models as well, or other the instruments to finance them. Yeah, I think to to wrap up, uh, I would say that also based on this discussion, uh, this topic is really really hard, and and these kind of changes and and so on can't be done uh, done that fast. But anyway, I think uh, kind of like sitting down uh, like this, the different kind of uh, parties and and. And not give the kind of the, the political decision making that much kind of power. It has power, but I mean that that we need to make uh, the the APIs. Uh, I don't actually mean even the the actual APIs, but to 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 connect with each other and and find the the best ways to to use your services and, and, and give it to benefit on, on our occupational healthcare customers and, and also, also the, the role of insurance companies as the, the preventive side. Mm -hmm. uh, and because you obviously have the, the same incentive that all of us have on that. So I encourage all, all the uh, different uh, stakeholders and roles here to, to interact and, and find the ways and uh, and I think the main thing is to be uh, uh, courage and, and do Open. things. Yeah. Not only plan, but, but actually do, do stuff. And I think we are on the, the right path. Just do it. Finland. Yeah. Okay. So thank you all. And, and this was thank a privilege. You. And thank you for the audience. And please come and, and talk with us if, if you are around after this. And I will be uh, uh, absolutely here. So if you want to talk about this or something else, we're here. Thank you. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Thank you.